Hey guys, thank you and welcome back to the channel. This series has been so much fun to see just grow um, and have more and more people come together to make more videos and just let the series keep on going. I really hope that we can hit 52 videos in the series at minimum. That's one a week for a year that people can watch. Um, you know, it would be an ultimate goal to hit 365 videos. So if there was a video every day that you could wake up, watch, get a little devotion, um, a little snippet of um, the gospel of Jesus Christ shared by a normal person um, just like me and you uh, who loves Christ and loves the outdoors and just wants to share information all about learning, growing, and sharing. Um, and this is the share part. And people are sharing what they've learned and how they've grown. So if you want to be a part of this series, please let me know on Instagram, Facebook, or email me at unboundedpursuit at gmail.com. But uh, this video is Elliot. Again, he um, probably at this point when this goes up about two months ago, shared a video. Um, this is his second one. And this is kind of just taking a look at when Jesus is uh, resurrected and coming back to the disciples. And he kind of just talks about Jesus chose these dudes that they weren't big fancy Pharisees or anything. They were just like fishermen and common guys um, that were messed up and made mistakes. I mean, Peter denied Christ three times when Christ was taken uh, to be crucified. Um, but Peter was a huge apostle. You know, he was someone that directly learned from and helped uh, Christ. So even he made mistakes. And Elliot, I think, is trying to show that um, through us, through them, we all make mistakes. But uh, God still chooses us to further his kingdom um, and to make a difference and to shine his light and his love in this world. So uh, please enjoy this video. Hope you guys didn't like it. Subscribe so that you can see more of these videos and this content. Um, we really want to share the gospel with the world. So um, without any more time, enjoy the video and uh, see you next Sunday for the next one. Thanks. John 21, 11. I did a little um, video coming out of hunting last week. That is my thoughts on this video. And of course I'm in my peaceful, um, walking in nature mode, you know, and not my usual, hey, I'm amongst the darkness of the world, fired up battle mode. So the video, you know, it's, it moves a little slower than normal. And I just say, maybe, um, maybe just, um, put your phone down and close your eyes and listen to the words. That way you're not distracted by, uh, look at his, um, bow and what's he got on there and what's he shooting or look at that and look at his new site what's that camo that's from australia that's the weirdest camo i've ever seen it's the best camo ever anyway um john 21 11 i'm gonna read it here um straight from the new american standard and um i, I encourage you to um read it for yourself in several different versions and then at the end of this video i'm gonna do a little bit of uh, bonus education uh, for some of those that are in America that don't get to shoot wild boars. Anyway, John 21, 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. I've never really heard a sermon on this, but the thing that strikes me about this whole situation is you've got Jesus showing up on the beach. They don't know it's him. He's been crucified. He is gone. So the boys go, yeah, um, I'm going fishing. Who's with me? So they go fishing and they don't catch anything all night, right? And then... Christ is ashore, you know, resurrected. And he's like, he says, children, did you catch any fish? And they're like, nope. And he goes, well, cast your net in the right side of the boat. Yeah, so they do that, which is kind of just weird. I, I would actually be kind of frustrated and tell the guy to shut up. But they throw the net in on the right side. And it's all full of fish and they can barely haul it in. Instantly, John goes, 
it is the Lord, right? So they all go running, uh, you know, paddling in. And actually, um, Peter, he puts on his overcoat because he was, you know, stripped down for fishing or something. I guess they fished naked back then. Anyway, so he throws his clothes on and then just hops in the water and goes to Jesus, which is super cool given that, um, you know, the last thing he did was deny him three times. But um, let's just jump ahead then to Jesus is sitting there with, you know, fish tacos, breakfast of fish, cooking. And he goes, hey, go get your net. And so that's when they grab the net and bring it ashore. And there's 153 fish. And... Um, What's interesting is here's the resurrected Christ. He's been gone for a couple days. These dudes, I don't know if, you know, they've been casting demons out in Jesus' name with him for the last three years, performing miracles, doing all sorts of cool things. He's gone, so they go fishing. I guess that's all they knew to do. Um... They don't catch anything, super unproductive. Jesus directs them, then they catch some fish. Cool. Hauls it in, and there's no, hey, Christ, where you been for three days? What have you been doing? Oh, whoa, death in Hades and, you know, preaching to some demons that were locked up in Genesis? Whoa, cool, tell us about that. No. There's these dudes going, uh, 41, 42, 43, 44. Hey, Peter, you want your fish? No, 47, 48, 49, 50, 49. Hey, uh, Jesus is telling us about the Gehenna and whatnot. 79. These dudes have messed up priorities. That's the point. I like that. God still chose to use them, build his church with these dudes. Uh, I'm walking with my bow on a Monday. I'm self-employed. I should probably be driving my, you know, money-making stuff that I should be doing Monday through Friday, right? But I have a loving wife who said, no, you go ahead. You go out there and do that. Hey, I didn't see, but maybe three deer. Maybe I'll tell you, it's two and a half. A doe, a fawn, and the back end of something that looked deer-like. My folks are coming in from the States tomorrow. I just wanted to go out, grab some meat. I guess I didn't put my net in on the right side of the boat. What an unproductive time. But Christ chose me anyway. I like that. Um, so on my way out of this video, um, out of the forest, I, I mentioned the, the doe and the fawn. My wife, the loving lady that she is, said uh, in a text, as I'm you know recording, she's like, go get that doe. So I instantly just abruptly cut the video off. I go back to the car, fill up my water bladder and, and, and head down there and I, I didn't find them, but whatever. Um, the priorities of the dudes that God chooses are always messed up and he chooses them anyway. And that's the, the solace that I find in this little passage. Um, these guys are counting fish when they're sitting there with the Lord of all creation resurrected. And, um, it's just like, Time and time again, we see these guys being idiots. And, and I say that lightly, but totally honestly. Like even John, um, as he's writing, just in the uh, chapter before or so, where they're at the tomb, he is, is, is self-incriminating, hey, and the disciple who Jesus loved got there before the big, fat, dumb Pete. Um, 
you know, and, and he writes it. And what's really cool in the abstract of this whole huge book, you know, whether it's David or whoever we look at who's making mistakes and God's forgiving them. And I, I, I love that because, man, I'm a sinner and God continues to use me in little ways when I don't even expect to be used. Um, but um, it's not a sales brochure for Christianity. If you really look at this book, that's what I love about it. Um, if, if it was, we would have edited out a whole lot of stuff as Christians looking back into it. But that, um, these little details of 153 fish are just small little things that I tend to pick up and, and I'm sure tons of other people do too, but man, really look at it as um, God uses the weak and the foolish to confound the wise. That's what he says in his word. And I just say, man, that's me. Put me on your list, man. Use me, please, Lord. And um, that's why I really like this verse. And of course, you know, it's a fisherman's verse because fishermen are, are numbers guys and that's what they're all about. How many, how big, you know? Um, and what's also cool is they honestly told the dude on the beach, who they didn't know was Jesus at first, that they didn't catch anything. They didn't talk about uh, the one that got away or whatever, you know, or make up some story as many fishermen do. Keep praying for the Holy Spirit and his wisdom when you open this book. Um, you don't need podcasts and you don't need little videos to teach you about the Bible because God is ready to let you know him through this if you just ask. And that's what I really, really am thankful for. All right. Okay, check this out. This is um, off of a wild boar. It's kind of a weird shaped head for something that was like it's almost seven feet long, really. Um, but, um, of course I, I bury it in my garden and paint it up and, um, do some stuff. But check this out. The lower tusks, you think, all right, now these are the ones that just rip your, um, calves apart when they get a hold of you and chase you down because you cannot outrun them. So, but look at the strength and the power and how buried deep the tusk is. That is how much is buried inside the bone of this mandible. And then that's what grabs a hold of you and just starts going, tearing you up. Anyway, interesting. Now all it is is a domestic pig that's gone one generation feral. And then it grows these dang teeth that are just used for, you know, uprooting trees and whatnot and getting grubs underneath them and bugs and whatnot. But it's an amazing bit of biology that not everybody gets to see. I, of course, make it a little less gross by giving it some artful look. That way my wife allows it in the kitchen. All right.